Now, how are you organizing your macros? Do you have one long routine or lots of small routines? Let's explore this discussion in this video. So back into the download file. And what I'm feeling is that this code that we've done is like one distinct phase. This is like a validation phase where we're checking the file. So why don't we split this off into a separate routine and it's almost like a preparation for the main routine. This is what we're going to look at. It's called a modular approach using lots of smaller macros. So how is this going to work? Well, we're going to have to introduce what's called a module level variable. Now, this variable is going to tell Excel if we are OK to start. And you can see I've called this variable OK to start. Uh, what kind of variable is this going to be? What do you think? What variable would do the job here? We're going to use a Boolean variable here. This Boolean variable is true or false. And perhaps you can guess if we're ready to start, we're going to set this variable to true because it's module level. The variable will be accessible to other modules and it will hold its value even when this particular routine is finished. At this point, let's also change the name of this routine because this isn't about analyzing files anymore. This is more about, let's just say, validate files, validate files. These are almost like, I sometimes call them pre-departure checks. Before we depart on our big long analysis macro, there's some things we've got to check. We're getting ready. Validate files seems like an informative routine name in this case. So at the beginning of the routine, uh, let's set the value of this Boolean variable to, well, it's a Boolean variable. So what can it be? It can be true or false. So let's set this to false and that we can see clearly, well, we can understand easily that we are now, we're now not going to start if that's false. And then at the end of the variable, if everything's okay, we can set this variable back to true. Now I've got to go all the way down to the bottom to see the end of this routine. I'm going to delete this end line, end sub line at the bottom, drop it back into the routine uh, further up. And now we've got a one distinct routine here. And this is what we're talking about using smaller routines. And then at the end of the routine, if we get to the end of the routine, then we're going to set this uh, variable we've just set up, our OK to start variable. We're going to set it to true. So this is creating the conditions where we are going to continue. We're going to run that analysis macro. We're only going to get to this line of code if everything is OK. If there's a problem with the workbooks, we're going to exit the routine here. So this variable is not going to be OK. Uh, if there's a problem with the number of open workbooks, we're going to exit the routine here. So this variable is still the value is still going to be false. So this is what I propose we do. Um, how can we test this if it's working? Well, how do we usually test things on the Tiger channel? Let's introduce a message box, message box here, and let's say OK to start. And that's very simple. That's just going to flash up the value held in the variable. It's a testing technique we use all the time on the channel. So what's going to happen when we run this routine? Just stop the video yourself. Stop the video. What do you think is going to happen now? I'm going to hit the F5 key to run the routine and we have got true there. OK, excellent. So let's um, test it uh, in another way. We want the value of this variable to be false. So message box here. I'm just going to copy it in um, below this line of code here. So if there's a problem with one of the worksheet names, we're going to go into uh, this conditional statement. This code is going to run. So I'm just going to set up a problem with one of the uh, worksheet uh, names, one of the workbook names rather. And then let's run the code again. And we can see, yep, we've got our message box there. That's good. And then we've got another message box here. This is telling us the value of our Boolean variable. OK, to start that we've just set up, we can see that variable is false. It only becomes true if all the conditions are met and we're ready to run. So this is a nice uh, validation mechanism. I'm going to reset this and then at the same time, let's just improve uh, this uh, message box. Improve this message box and let's make sure um, I'm going to hit an underscore here to uh, move the code onto the next line. Let's make sure there's something in the title of the message box. So let's do this and let's say um, check files. 
something like this. And I think we're going to need a zero in here as well, just to, to, to specify the type of message box there. OK, so I'm going to recreate the situation so we get into that part of the code. Let's run the code and we should see our message box now much more informative. I think anyway, much more informative rather than Microsoft Excel in the top left hand corner. We're telling the user something useful. You need to check the files. OK, so again, I'm going to go ahead and let's just check the first message box as well. OK, let's do the same thing here. OK, with the first message box, we've remembered to put the title in. So that's good. OK, I'm going to um, reset this spelling. <laughs> See if I can spell data correctly. As I said, my VBA is fine. My my British spelling, you know, still working on that. And then here, message box. OK, to start, we don't need that anymore. So that should reset everything. And we should just flash up the name of the variable at the end. Hit the F5 key. Uh, not the name of the variable, the value of the variable flashing up there. So I'm happy with that. So now we're moving towards what I would call a more modular approach. And this is something I've been practicing in my programming more and more in recent years. Rather than having one long routine, let's have a number of short routines and let's have more interaction between the routines. Hi guys, it's Chris here. Yes, I'm, I'm up here in the corner while he's on pause. Let me tell you about Members Monday. This is a weekly Excel VBA live tutorial with me. When you sign up for Members Monday, you're going to get access to all the previous Members Monday live streams. It's a great way for you to push forward your Excel VBA. I'd love to see you there. Click join below this video for more information. I'm going to take him off pause. Let's get back into it. Routines, calling one routine from another routine. Now, this has the, has lots of benefits. One benefit is for debugging. It's much easier for us to understand what's going wrong uh, if those if the routines are separated out. OK, there's a problem with that routine. So the problem must be X. There's a problem with the validate files routine. There must be a problem with the name of the files. This I found very helpful to the programmer and to the customer. They can understand uh, much better what's going on. Uh, so if everything's OK, the OK to start variable is going to be set to true. And then let's continue this kind of modular theme now. Let's go ahead and create another routine and let's call this uh, analyze files. And then end sub here. OK, so now we can look at calling one routine from another. If OK, OK to start is true, then we're going to let's uh, put a conditional statement here to capture capture this logic. If OK to, OK to start, of course, equals true. OK to start equals true. Then, then we want the next macro to run, the analyze files macro to run. How do we do that? You can finish off the code here yourself. Then analyze underscore files. Uh, then call analyze files is what we're going to say. I think if you just put analyze files, it will probably work. But let's say call analyze files and let's put a message box here and let's say we're in the analyze files routine. So you can see you can see how this is working, moving one from one routine to the next. OK, so if, if everything's OK, then we're going to set the, the value of the OK to start variable to true. And we're going to call the next routine. But if the value of the variable is false, if we're not ready, then we can see because of the conditional statement here, we're not going to call the routine. So save the file control. That's what's going to happen when we run the code. Now, stop the video. Think about that. What's going to happen when we run the code? Hit the F5 key and I can see the message box says we are in the analyze files routine. One more thing we need to do just to finish this off. Uh, we're going to we're only going to analyze the files if we're ready to do that. If the value of this variable is true, we're ready to go. So let's translate that into some VBA. So let's say if OK to start equals false, then message box. Message box are not ready to begin analysis. And then the same thing, let's specify the type of the message box and then let's use the title of the message box to help the user. Let's say check files. There we go. So something informative there and analysis, check the spelling again. 
and then we're going to say exit sub here. Okay, let's get these in the right places and exit sub and end if. So it's a very uh, kind of familiar uh, construct for us here. Just move the VB editor across a bit here. It's a familiar construct for us here. Uh, we've had the same construct here and it's, yeah, it's a very common construct. Uh, flashing up a message box if something's wrong, checking if something's wrong, flashing up a message box, telling the user something informative and then exiting the routine. So this is like an extra layer of uh, security for us. And this means that the files have to be prepared. The situation conditions have to be right in order to run this complicated analyze files macro. So this is how I use a modular approach in my coding. It simplified things for me, allow me to create more powerful VBA routines. If you get good at this modular approach, it's going to do the same for you.